Welcome to Beach Grove City Schools. You are watching this video if you are interested in getting information to enroll a new student in our online portal. Before you will be able to enroll your student, you will need to request an account. In order to access that information to request the account, you will need to go off of the Beach Grove City School website, click on Registration and Enrollment Information, and then off of this site, you would go to the New to District Enrollment. This is to register students who live within the boundaries for Beach Grove City Schools or who have attended here sometime in the past but may have not completed the 2015-2016 school year. If your students are out of the district, you will need to call our administration office in order to receive the information to be entered into the lottery. When you access the site for new to district enrollment, you will click on the link to request an account. On this page, you will need to enter in the name of the legal parent or guardian of the student you wish to enroll. This is for the parent. Then you'll need to enter in your contact information. Please enter in a valid email address. This is important because you will be emailed the link to complete the online registration. You can go ahead and enter your phone number. And then we need you to enter in your address. Once you have entered in that information, you will then need to go ahead and select that you want to request, submit your account request. There will be a confirmation window that will appear. Please press OK. And then you will have a enrollment submitted message letting you know that the email has been sent to your email address that you entered with how to continue to enroll your student. Once you receive your confirmation email with your new student enrollment information for your new account, you can go ahead and click the link in the email to be able to sign in to begin the online registration. When you sign in, you will be taken to the Beach Grove City Schools application form. There are some important features to notice on, on this website. You can print the application. You can complete each step in separate sittings, or you can go ahead and complete them all at one time. That will be completely up to you and to how much time you have. Step one pertains to your student's information. Step two is regarding the family or guardian information. Step three is emergency contact information. And step four will take you through the additional district forms. Across the bottom of the screen, you have your, the choices to save and continue, to save and go to a summary page, to print your application, or to leave without saving. If you do work on the application in different sittings or different sessions, please be sure to save when you are done. Alrighty, so to begin, the first step is to start with your student information. You'll need to enter in any field that has the red asterisk. That is a required field and must be submitted in order for your application to be reviewed. Student's legal last name first name, and then you can enter in the middle name if there is a middle name. You need to enter in the gender of the child and their date of birth. When you enter in the student's age, or you enter in the birth date, I'm sorry, the expected grade level will be 
brought up for you. Now, if this is not correct, if your student has been held back for any reason, you will want to change this in the application. You can enter in the Social Security number if you have that, though that is not a required field at this time. Enter in if your student is Hispanic or Latino, and we need you to select the federal race. Please select the language spoken most often at home. If you have the student's previous school district, you can go ahead and enter that here. And if you have the name of the school where the student previously attended, you can enter that in this field as well. You are enrolling your student for this coming school year, the 2016-2017 school year. The first day of school is July 28th. If that is the first date you expect your child to attend, you would want to enter in that date. The expected grade level is automatically filled in. The expected school. In Beach Grove, we have grade level buildings. Hornet Park is our kindergarten and first grade building. Central Elementary is our second and third grade building. South Grove is for grades four, five, and six. Beach Grove Middle School, grades seven and eight. And Beach Grove High School, grades nine, 10, 11, and 12. If there's any other additional information that you want to include, you can type it in this field. I am finished with step one. I'm going to choose to complete step one only. If you are wanting to continue on to step two, you would make this choice right here. Once I complete step one, you're going to see that I have a check mark showing me the date of completion. If I need to go back and edit something, I can do so by pressing this button, or if I want to view it, I can choose view only. This concludes filling in step one of the new student online enrollment. Step two is where you will enter the family or guardian information for the student that you are enrolling. Please note, do not use comma or periods in the address fields. Some of this information may have populated from when you created your request for an account in Skyward. Um, if the information is there, please verify that it was typed in correctly. You'll need to enter in the phone number for the family that the student lives with. Please select which language is spoken most often at home. Enter in the house address. You will notice when you start entering in street names that the avenue or street will automatically appear. You can go ahead then and select on the suggested street as long as it is correct. You will need to put in the city state, and then zip code. The county should automatically come up as Marion County. You will see the red asterisk is there telling you that that is a required field. Please enter in the mailing address if this is different than the home address. Enter in the information for the primary guardian of the family this student lives with. would help if I would read so we would know it is the last name and then first name gender and then please select the relationship to the child check if this parent or guardian has legal custody and check if this parent or guardian is allowed to pick up the student from school enter in the phone number and a work phone number if that applies Email address, occupation, and employer is also um, available to be entered at this point. If there are other legal guardians who live at this address, you can check or select the bar to add another legal guardian who lives at this address. You can choose to select a guardian who lives at a different address. You can choose no that you are done and you would like to complete step two and move on to step three for emergency contact information, or you can choose to just complete step two at this time.
When I choose to complete step two at this time, you will see I can edit information if I need to go back and fix something. I can view only, and you will see the check mark with the date completed, so you know you have completed step two of the application form. Step three is for the emergency contact information for your child. Enter in emergency contact number one. You can have up to three contacts for the emergency contact information. The parent or guardian will always be contacted first in case of an emergency. Please enter in the student's last or the emergency contact's last name and the first name. Please check if this contact is allowed to pick the student up from school. Enter in the gender and what language this person speaks. Enter in the phone number. If you know the cell phone, ad, phone number, that would also be helpful. And a work phone can also be entered as well. Enter in the relationship to the child. If you'd like to add additional emergency contacts, please select the yes, I want to add another emergency contact record. If you are done with this step and would like to move on to step four, please select the middle bar. And if you are done with step three, please choose the third option, no, complete step three only. Again, you will see that you can edit the emergency contact information, you can view this information, and you will find you have the check mark with the date completed, letting you know that you have complete step three of the registration process. Section four deals with the additional district forms you will need to submit online for Beech Grove City Schools. You can print a copy for your own records. However, it is not necessary to print a copy for Beech Grove City Schools. We accept the online signature submission. The first form is the 2016-2017 transportation information. Once you click on the form, the form will go ahead and launch for you and there will be certain information that is automatically populated. On the transportation form we are interested in knowing how your child will get to and from school. Please fill in the drop down menus regarding the school your child will attend. Notice there are two sections how your child will get to school and how your child will come home after school. For the school transportation you would need to go ahead and fill in how the child is going to get there by bus by car walking or another means of transportation if you are filling in a bus information you will need to enter in your street address if there is a direction on the street the avenue if there's an apartment and then the city After school, how will your child get home? You could go ahead and again choose bus if there would be a car rider, other, or walking. If there's a babysitter where your child is going, please enter the city's name, sitter's name, and the sitter's phone. For kindergarten, it is essential that we have a name of the person who will be meeting the child at the bus stop and a phone number. If you need to make a change at any point during the year to the transportation plan, you must submit this in writing. Once you are done with the bus transportation, you can go ahead and press the save button. If you would like to save and print for your own records, you can go ahead and do that. Notice if you forget a location or get, forget some information, Skyward will remind you. Now we'll try saving. And once we've saved that, it's going to take us back to our main step four screens. And now you will notice there's a check stating that this form has been completed. For the 2016-2017 military children in education, when you open up that form, you will have information automatically populated about the student you'll need to go ahead and answer the drop-down menus. 
This is all related to military service. When you've completed the drop-down menus, make sure you drop down to acknowledge that this is your electronic signature. You need to type in the name, your name, and the date that you are completing the form. Once you've completed that form, you can go ahead and press Save, and you will be returned to the main screen. The next form is regarding residency. Again, information will populate. You need to select if this address is temporary or permanent. If it is a temporary address, you need to submit the reason why this is a temporary uh, residential situation. Is this permanent housing? Is it a doubled up situation? If so, please fill in all the information needed. If it is sheltered or unsheltered, or if there is um, circumstances where you are residing in a hotel or a motel, please select that option. Um, you do need to answer, is the above student living without parents or guardians and under the age of 18? and then you need to fill in and acknowledge the residency and educational rights. When you've read through that, you are affirming that this is your digital signature, and then type in your name. If you do not have a social security number, you would type in the word none. And once again, it's lovely that I have forgotten a required field. Let's try that again, save, and now we are back to the list. The 2016-2017 Acceptable Use and Safety Agreement pertains to your child's use of the internet and our school's technology. You will want to read through the information regarding the school's computer network, and you also want to read through the Acceptable Use and Safety Agreement. All children, kindergarten through 12th grade, need to understand and acknowledge the rules for using the technology at school. Your students also go over this in their respective schools. Acknowledge that this is your signature, type in your name, and the date you have viewed it. When you are done, be sure to scroll back to the top and press save. The next form is regarding the device use agreement. Your children, depending on their school, will be using a variety of technology. In our kindergarten and first grade schools, they use the iPads and computer labs. At Central, they use iPads and Chromebooks and computer labs. At South Grove, they are one-to-one -one with Chromebooks. The middle school, one-to-one -one with Chromebooks. And at our high school, they are also one-to-one -one with a Chromebook and have access to computer labs. You want to make sure you read through the technology device use agreement. If you would like a copy of that specific, the, the specifications of that agreement, you can click on the website listed in the agreement. You would need to acknowledge that you have read this agreement and that this is your digital signature. Once again, you'll need to save to go back to the main menu. The next form is the Migrant Work Survey. This is through the Department of Education. There will be fields that automatically fill in for you. How long have you lived in the school district? If you've not been in the district more than a few months, please enter that. Has the child changed school districts within the last three years, you would need to mention that if this is yes, if you this was for looking for seasonal or temporary work in agriculture. If you answer no, please skip down to section three of the form. You are acknowledging that this is your digital signature and you need to enter in the date that you've signed the agreement. Once you've entered in your signature, press save and you will be returned back to the main screen. 
The next item is the 2016-2017 CHIRP form. This form is through Community Health Network. This is regarding immunizations. On this form, you do need to enter in your first and last name as the parent of the child. Then you also need to acknowledge that this is your signature and you need to enter in the date signed. Once you have finished, be sure to save. Our last form is the 2016-2017 Consent and HIPAA Authorization. This form is allowing the school nurse in each building to treat your child. You do need to fill in a few drop-down menus that, yes, this is your digital signature, and acknowledge the date signed. And then you also need to acknowledge the Information Privacy Clause, putting in your initials. The student's name will populate. Verify that this is your digital signature. Type in your name and, again, the date. Once you have finished, be sure to save the form. Once you have finished all forms, you can go ahead and press Save on Step 4. When you have all sections completed, you will want to go ahead and submit the application to the school district. And it says step four is not complete. Let's just see here. Check, check, check. Complete step four. Now I have the check that it is indeed completed and I can submit the application to the school district. This is the confirmation and then I can submit the application. This is also reminding you that you will need to provide information of your immu the immunization record, the legal birth certificate, social security card, and I believe it is three proofs of residency, um, and then the legal, legal guardianship papers where applies. If you have any questions, please do not hesitate to contact our administration office. Thank you so much for watching.